Japan up close. So I first、uh, became interested in Japan after taking a Japanese class when I was in high school. I lived in the middle of nowhere, and、uh, we actually had a Japanese class、uh, because one of the teachers was offering it. And I thought if I wanted to get into IT in the future, being able to speak Japanese as well would be give me a leg up. I thought so. I took it for a very selfish reason, but I began to fall in love with the country. Uh, and I visited a couple times.、Uh, once in 2000, for my first time, I came with my father, and I was pleasantly surprised at how accessible it was here. And I kept coming back, and every time it was more and more accessible.、Uh, and I fell in love with it even more. And I moved here in 2007, and actually became a Japanese citizen in 2016. So when I first came to Japan in、uh, 2000, there was literally no information on accessibility here.、Um, the only time, thing we had was. Uh, guidebooks like Lonely Planet,、um, but they're limited by the number of pages they have, and so they try to cram in as much information as possible. And if there's ever any information on accessibility, it's usually maybe one or two paragraphs. Like it's you can use the train, or it's difficult for people with disabilities, etc.、Um, so when I came here, I literally had no information,、uh, but I was pleased with how accessible things were and how things progressed.、Um, and back in 2015, when I started Accessible Japan. I realized that、uh, there was still a lot of information missing.、Um, a lot of、uh, the Japanese guides would have information on accessibility,、um, but almost anything you looked at in English would be nothing on, for example, hotels websites about accessibility or、um, famous tourist attractions、um, or other tourist blogs, etc.、Uh, there wasn't really anything available, and I felt that it was really important to have that information out there. Uh, a lot of people with disabilities,、um, we, we like to look up information before we go places.、Uh, you don't want to go all the effort and、uh, time and、uh, money to go a place and then find out it's not accessible because it can be quite disappointing,、uh, and even more so when it's、uh, across the seas.、Um, so people would like to have as much information as possible before they go. And I think also a lot of people have misunderstandings about what it's like here in Japan.、Uh, you see pictures of you know crowded trains on、uh, Facebook and Twitter. And, And、uh, small shops with only one person can fit in, etc. So that's the image that a lot of people have, and so they think that, oh, yeah, I can't go over there in a wheelchair.、Um, so I want to provide、uh, the truth、um, and provide information so people can、uh, enjoy their trip, planning the trip to Japan. One of the things that I've been most impressed with in Japan is the the pace at which、uh, Japan has tackled accessibility.、Uh, the first time I came was about 20 years ago. And maybe only about 30% of the train stations were accessible,、uh, but the the staff made as many accommodations as they could to help me get around. It even meant you know taking fun trips through the back ends of、uh, stations and seeing things that most people didn't see.、Um, but every time I came back,、uh, every two or three years I came back, there were more and more places I could go,、uh, more and more places I could access.、Um, and then in the last 10 years,、uh, the pace has been incredible at、uh, becoming accessible. In terms of getting around, particularly、uh, right now,、uh, the rules are that if you have 3,000 daily visitors at a station, it must be accessible.、Uh, so that includes about 96% of the stations in Tokyo.、Uh, so if you are traveling around with a disability,、uh, you might need to take a, a detour here or there、uh, at times, but、uh, you don't need to worry about you know is that station going to be accessible、uh, or how am I going to get there because the staff will help you get there. And so. That's really been impressed on me. As I visit other countries and see the pace has been really slow, where nothing really changes over time. But、um, in Japan, things are working at a great pace. So I think、uh, moving forward, well, all around the world,、uh, but also in Japan,、um, a change in attitude as to、um, uh, accessibility in terms of not as an extra cost, but as an investment, so that you can get、uh, more customers in the future. I think this is particularly applicable. Uh, in the hospitality industry and travel industry,、um, where they have limited space for、uh, hotel rooms with accessibility features, etc.,、um, and it can be considered,、um, you know, losing money to make, you know, an accessible room.、Um, but in Japan, has an aging population.、Uh, people in other surrounding countries in Asia as well. There's an aging population, and there are people who are traveling as families、um, who have special needs, and、um, to have the opportunities for people to. Come and visit the country because of those accessible features. I think will have a, a market impact.、Um, so I think that's a, an attitude change that needs to happen,、um, as well as、um, while、well, we invite more and more people, particularly for the Olympics and Paralympics or other events that are happening、uh, 
uh, in Japan. Um, the idea of flexibility and understanding that people from other countries have different ways of doing things uh, will I think need to be uh, better understood as we move forward. Um, a, I mean, one of the great things about Japan is that you know the trains uh, run by the the second because of uh, the uh, following of rules, but also following rules can make it difficult for someone who doesn't fit into the rules. Um, and so because of that, I think that there needs to be both uh, you know appreciation of the rules, but also um, the understanding that there are special cases and they take things more on a case by case basis. Um, so for example, if uh, somebody in a wheelchair can't take the normal route through a Japanese garden, um, you know, it'd be okay for them to go through the staff pathway uh, to access the next area if that's the, the way that they can do it. Um, yes, I think that um, Japan's attention to service uh, really helps uh, stand out in terms of accessibility as well. Uh, for example, if you're riding the train in Japan, uh, you'll be greeted by a staff uh, member who will put out a ramp for you to get on the train. Uh, but not only that, they will call ahead to any uh, transfers you have or to your final destination, uh, even letting them know what car you're in and uh, what time you'll be arriving at. So when you arrive at your destination, somebody is waiting for, uh, with, for you with a ramp uh, to get on and off easily. And I think you know, don't see that in a lot of other countries that, that I've visited. Um, and so I think that attention to detail is also really incredible. I think there's also a lot of um, you know, care put into things like uh, public facilities, for example, even um, the, the, the toilets for people with disabilities. Um, they have a separate room uh, for a separate private toilet, uh, whereas in, for where I'm from in Canada, uh, it was usually only the, the men's toilet or the women's toilet. Um, so when I was younger, it was always you know, a little bit awkward if I needed to use the toilet if my, if my mother was the only one with me. Um, so having that attention to detail, private space, as well as lots of facilities, uh, to meet different needs, I think, uh, you know, something that really shows uh, Japanese attention to detail. Um, and you can feel also that service at other, other areas as well. A lot of uh, the tourist attractions lately uh, have been putting more and more thought into uh, making their places more accessible for people who are elderly to, or have uh, baby carriages um, or have disabilities. Uh, one of my favorite places is Sensoji in Asakusa, and uh, for a number of years now they've had uh, more and more accessibility features added. Uh, they removed all the steps all the way up to the temple. Uh, they've added an elevator in. Uh, multiple accessible toilets are available. So even if you're in a wheelchair, you can do all of the things that everybody else does. Uh, Meiji Jingu as well, they have added, um, there's a long pathway made of gravel, which is difficult in a wheelchair usually, um, but on the side they've added new paved walkways. Uh, they've added ramps um, in numerous locations as well. So again, you can do all the things that other tourists are doing. Uh, so I think that Japan has really been putting a big focus on uh, making it uh, a country that welcomes everybody to come and enjoy it. And if you're here for the long term as well, I found that uh, the Japanese uh, systems are very fair and, and balanced for people, uh, regardless of their ability or disability. Um, and so yeah, I think it's a very welcoming place and definitely the service and attention to detail is really felt. I think there are definitely uh, challenges that people have that they don't have in different countries. Um, for example, there are very few hotel rooms here that are accessible. Uh, at the moment, there are only 0.4% of the hotel rooms in all of Japan uh, are wheelchair accessible. Uh, a lot of people from countries where there's very strong um, accessibility laws uh, might also be surprised that a lot of the laws here are a little bit more abstract um, and therefore uh, you can get a, quite a variety uh, in types of different accessibility rooms or accessibility features across Japan. Um, in addition to that, I think that some people might also be surprised uh, that a lot of times mobility scooters um, are not common here in Japan uh, and therefore um, they have trouble accessing ra the rail system uh, because of that. Um, and there's also things like um, just you know, cultural things like uh, taking off your shoes uh, when you go into places um, as well as the fact that uh, many places are very squished and, and tiny here uh, and uh, therefore the way they're built uh, they have steps and um, it's difficult to move it around in a wheelchair. So I think those are some things that are unique to Japan that provides uh, extra bits of challenges for people. Japan up close.